looking uncomfortable before she even began. Liz Truss knows she's in trouble. Good afternoon. My conviction that this country needs to go for growth is rooted in my personal experience. I know what it's like to grow up somewhere that isn't feeling the benefits of growth. I saw what that meant, and I'm not prepared to accept that for our country. I want a country where people can get good jobs, new businesses can set up, and families can afford an even better life. That's why, from day one, I've been ambitious for growth. Since the 2008 financial crisis, the potential of this great country has been held back by persistently weak growth. I want to deliver a low-tax, high-wage, high-growth economy. It's what I was elected by my party to do. That mission remains. People across this country rightly want stability. That's why we acted to support businesses and households with their energy costs this winter. It's also the case that global economic conditions are worsening due to the continuation of Putin's appalling war in Ukraine. And on top of this, debt was amassed helping people through the COVID pandemic. Blaming Putin and the pandemic while sticking to the same economic argument in principle, but in practice, everything's falling apart. But it is clear that parts of our mini budget went further and faster than markets were expecting. So the way we are delivering our mission right now has to change. We need to act now to reassure the markets of our fiscal discipline. I have therefore decided to keep the increase in corporation tax that was planned by the previous government. This will raise £18 billion per year. It will act as a down payment on our full medium-term fiscal plan, which will be accompanied by a forecast from the independent OBR. We will do whatever is necessary to ensure debt is falling as a share of the economy in the medium term. We will control the size of the state to ensure that taxpayers' money is always well spent. Our public sector will become more efficient to deliver world-class services for the British people. And spending will grow less rapidly than previously planned. The second policy U-turn in less than two weeks, hoping to calm the markets, but a PM signalling panic. This, a government in freefall. I met the former Chancellor earlier today. I was incredibly sorry to lose him. He is a great friend and he shares my vision to set this country on the path to growth. Today, I have asked Jeremy Hunt to become the new Chancellor. He's one of the most experienced and widely respected government ministers and parliamentarians. And he shares my convictions and ambitions for our country. He will deliver the medium term fiscal plan at the end of this month. He will see through the support we are providing to help families and businesses, including our energy price guarantee that's protecting people from higher energy bills this winter. And he will drive our mission to go for growth including taking forward the supply-side reforms that our country needs. Dark days for a PM who turned up in black to a news conference in which she said very little, but which illustrated just how bad this really is. We owe it to the next generation to improve our economic performance, to deliver higher wages, new jobs and better public services, and to ease the burden of debt. I have acted decisively today because my priority is ensuring our country's economic stability. As Prime Minister, I will always act in the national interest. This is always my first consideration. I want to be honest, this is difficult, but we will get through this storm and we will deliver the strong and sustained growth that can transform the prosperity of our country for generations to come. A critical juncture for her I'll government marked by speech questions. lasting barely four um, minutes and then a Q&A session which made her perilous position look even worse. Thank you, Prime Minister. Clearly a difficult day. Can you explain to the public why you think you should remain as Prime Minister given you've 
junk to keep tax cuts that led you to be elected and got rid of your Chancellor? I'm absolutely determined to see through what I have promised, to deliver a higher growth, more prosperous United Kingdom, to see us through the storm we face. We've already delivered the energy price guarantee, making sure people aren't facing huge bills this winter. But it was right in the face of the issues that we had that I acted decisively to ensure that we have economic stability, because that is vitally important to people and businesses right across our country. A country which has already seen one policy U-turn, today another, and the man charged with implementing her policies gone. You were the one that wanted to cut the 45p rate. You stood on a platform to win the leadership of the Conservative Party on a platform to cut corporation tax. You and the Chancellor, the ex-Chancellor, designed this budget together, in lockstep, we're told, at times in secret, the two of you. He has to go because of the fallout from it. How come you get to stay? Well, my priority is making sure we deliver the economic stability that our country needs. That's why I had to take the difficult decisions I've taken today. The mission remains the same. We do need to raise our country's economic growth levels. We do need to deliver for people across the country. We're committed to delivering on the energy price guarantee, which people are already seeing in their bills. But ultimately, we also need to make sure that we have economic stability. And I have to act in the national interest as Prime Minister. A Prime Minister uh, not in control and out of her depth. Excuse the bluntness, Prime Minister, but given everything that has happened, what credibility do you have to continue governing? What I have done today is made sure that we have economic stability in this country. Jeremy Hunt, as Chancellor, is somebody who shares my desire for a high-growth, low-tax economy. But we recognise, because of current market issues, we have to deliver the mission in a different way. And that's what we are absolutely committed to do, achieving that stability at what is a very difficult time globally. The uh, former Tory Chancellor, Philip Hammond, has just said that you have totally trashed the Tory party's election-winning reputation for economic competence. Will you apologise to your party? Another question prompting another awkward pause. None of this easy. Well, I am determined to deliver on what I set out when I campaigned to be party leader. We need to have a high growth economy, but we have to recognise that we are facing very difficult issues as a country. And it was right in the national interest that I made the decisions I've made today to restore that economic stability so we can deliver, first of all, helping people through this winter and next winter with their energy bills, but also making sure that our country is on the long-term footing for sustainable economic growth. Thank you very much, everybody. Are you going to say sorry? A question to sum up the mood in this room. The chaos inside Downing Street clear on the outside too. Dissent in every corner of Westminster and a party deeply divided. Do you feel like you've been betrayed by the Prime Hello. Minister? Hello. This man was until today perhaps the Prime Minister's biggest ally. In his departure letter, Kwasi Kwarteng made clear this was not his choice. Writing, you've asked me to stand aside as your Chancellor, I have accepted. Allies parted. We have been colleagues and friends for many years, but promising loyalty and support from the back benches too. Liz Truss responded to say she was deeply sorry to lose her Chancellor despite sacking him and thanking him for putting the national interest first. But this also about a Prime Minister trying to save herself and she'll need the support of her party to do it. All of us on the Conservative backbenches owe it to the government to try and give our best support while offering thoughts and views on aspects of the plan that we may feel have strayed from the 2019 manifesto or need delivering in a different way. Much of that will now fall on Jeremy Hunt.
a cabinet constant. Do you have any faith that you'll be able to restore the financial market, sir? Yes, sir? With a significant challenge ahead. We're now on the fourth Conservative Chancellor this year. In fact, we're on the fourth Conservative Chancellor since July this year. The truth is, another change in who is running the Treasury, another Tory Chancellor, isn't the answer to the challenges that we face as a country. The Tories are out of ideas, they're out of time. Ousting her Chancellor in a bid to save herself, Liz Truss might have bought herself a little bit of time today, but nothing has changed and in fact she could have made things worse. The sacking of Kwasi Kwarteng revealing to her party the full-blown panic number 10 is now in. Tory ministers and grandees tell me it's now a question of when, not if, she has to go. One former cabinet minister told me we know how this ends. Another said she has to go. Even a serving cabinet minister admitted to me this isn't going to last. Just six weeks in and now the only talk is about when she'll be gone. A party out of control, a PM all but out of power and a country in crisis. Beth Rigby, Sky News, Westminster.